Hello and welcome to this SQL tutorial with me, James from Mathdar Software. Today we're focusing on looking at currency symbols within SQL Server and also how we can change these and change and view our language settings as well. So we'll look at a lot of good sort of inbuilt procedures, ways that we can query currency data and variables and more. So the first thing we have here, we want to view our quote unquote issue. We have our order ID, unit price, quantity, um, and the total price, which is simply the unit price multiplied by the quantity. However, this is from order details in Northwind, so you can access this script online. You can get it in GitHub if you want to follow along and pause the video. You'll notice that the unit price and total quantity didn't have any currency assigned to them. Now we can actually check the current language with this script. So type description, database name and language name. And you'll see in the last column, we get the default language name and it's at US English. Now I can go through and execute this procedure to display information about all installed alternative languages. So I'm here in Britain. Um, I would rather have the British language as my default. So you can see there we've got the name British, so I can use that within the next steps. Uh, and likewise, you can view, you know, German, French, whatever, Indian, Italian, whatever that may be. And you can also assign this yourself. So if we actually move down and look at how we can adjust our original query to actually show currency. So those initial fields, the unit price, and we had the total price, um, we just need to wrap it in the format function um, and use an uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter, C for currency within a single quotation mark. And this will add values as per a culture that we've specified, which we'll look at later, or the associated symbol for our current session's language. So for us, we had US English, so that's why it was important to note it earlier. So I get a dollar sign. But in the step above, you can see, um, let's say I looked through the help language fields and I saw that I wanted British. I can then change my language with set language and the appropriate one. And when I execute this currency query now, I actually have um, British pound sterling symbol, which is specific to my language and at source system, the values were calculated in pounds sterling. So I want to rect uh, rectify that and show that clearly. So you can also see after the C within our format parenthesis, we can specify the amount of decimal places. So if we just have flat round values, we can use C zero for zero decimal places. Or if we have, you know, we want to round it to, to a float with one decimal place, and we could do that. And, and you can specify how many decimal places you want. You probably use the standard two decimal places. Now here's a, just a different way to show it. I'm not actually using um, specified fields. I'm just declaring a variable of amount and the money type of 325.50. Um, and I can select that variable amount and call it amount. And that can be um, one column. And I'm just gonna populate other columns to show you. We can actually use a third argument which is called a culture, which is just the shortened um, code for the region. So ENGB is British, FRFR is France, obviously. And we can actually, this is another way, um, without changing your language settings, to get the relevant symbols, because it's not always practical to just change your system language settings. And you can see that works. Not only does it display the symbols, in Britain we would use a, a decimal point, to break up the, the decimal numbers after. However, you'll see in France and Germany, they've got the comma. So it can be, be more specific to the region as well. So hopefully that's been a good introduction. Um, it's a common use case. And as usual, if you like the content, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you.